Hey guys, welcome back to the Kin Woven Home. I am Shara, and today we're starting a brand new series that I'm very excited about. It is going to be quick, informative, and I think it's gonna be a little bit of fun. So we're calling it Design Questions Answered. Very simple and to the point. I've decided we're gonna put a timer on the clock. Today's timer is gonna be 10 minutes. I don't know if every day is gonna be 10 minutes, but we got a lot of questions on today's category, today's topic, which is bedroom decorating. Okay, today's question of the video is what five categories of design-related questions do you want me to cover? So today we're talking about bedrooms. For next week, I've already picked. It's gonna be about accessorizing or styling. So if you are interested in entering a question, go over to my Instagram, at Shara Stevens, and make sure you enter your question there. So what other, so I guess what three other categories do you want me to cover in this series? And I will see the most popular ones and we'll go from there. We're gonna set a clock, a timer, for 10 minutes after this little intro. Oh no, should I have done more time? <clears throat> Start your engines. Okay, what's the first question? Okay, so when it comes to rugs under beds, I recommend that your rug is actually horizontal underneath the bed. It doesn't have to go all the way underneath the full entire bed, but it should be about two feet out from either all sides of the bed, two to three feet, and it should be at least under half of your bed, kind of right before your nightstands. It doesn't have to go under the nightstands. In fact, I prefer if it doesn't. Sconces by the bed are really great. It's a fun way to add some like dimension and kind of a little bit of an accessory while also getting art. Obviously, if your bed is in front of a window, you can't really use sconces, but if you have a clean wall behind your bed, behind your nightstands, I think that's an excellent time to use sconces behind the bed if it's your style. How do you select window treatments for a bedroom? Well, you'll probably want room darkening, so that's kind of the first thing that I would address. Depending on your style, keeping it neutral because neutral never really falls out of style. You can also go fun with a pattern, but that is more of a trendy thing and you'll probably have to update your window treatments a little bit more often as that pattern kind of goes out of style, so just keep that in mind. But I definitely think it's fun to add a pattern in your space, yes. If you have a thin pile carpet, yes to a rug on carpet. If you have shag carpet, your rug will be bumpy and look weird. But if you have just like basic rug, this should not count against my time. There's a jackhammer going off. A jackhammer, a semi truck. Where's the motorcycle or a plane? Somewhere, anywhere? A little stinker. Oh my gosh, it's a jackhammer on a tractor. I've never seen that. Does this sound like I'm farting? This is not fair. <laughs> We're just gonna go with it. Yes, a bed can definitely be in front of a window. In fact, sometimes I prefer it if the location, like I love to see a bed right when you walk into a room. Uh, if that wall, when you walk into a room, happens to have a window on it, I think you can totally put the bed in front of a window. I just would recommend not using a really tall headboard. Try to keep your headboard pretty low. Your nightstand should be at least as tall as your mattress or maybe even up to two inches higher than your mattress, don't go lower. Yes, I think that you can, especially if you are have like a bohemian style, I think this is a great way to bring in some different textures. You want them to be comparable in their height and their width. If you aren't bohemian, but you have a tight budget and you don't have the ability to get matching nightstands, I would either paint them or make sure they're the same wood tone and the same size. And that could go with a lot of different styles. I personally think you do always need a headboard. I think it makes the room feel really finished. There are two caveats to that. One, if you're in a dorm room, there's plenty of ways to DIY a headboard, like use a placemat or something that looks like a headboard. Also, if you're on a tight budget or you are like, again, a bohemian style, you can use cool things like an old gate. In my opinion, I do think that having a headboard and a full bed that like covers, you know, your actual mattress and everything, that is what makes the room look really finished and beautiful. Yeah, I think art above a bed is really great, especially if you use the space appropriately. If you have some horizontal space above your bed, make sure you fill it with horizontal art. If you have a ton of vertical space above your bed, you can fill it with a vertical piece of art, but just make sure that it's the appropriate size for the opening that you have above your bed. Storage in a bedroom, this used to be my jam. I mean, it still is, but now I live in a much bigger space. But back in the day, I used to live in like 500 square feet. For years, I lived in that. And that wasn't just my bedroom, that was my whole house. You have a ton of unused space under your bed. You can put your bed up on stilts if you don't have a high bed with room. Tons of storage possibilities underneath your bed. Hmm, a bedroom with angled ceilings. 
I think maybe what you mean is when you have like a dormer, I think a really fun thing to brighten that up and kind of disguise the fact that you have these weird low ceilings is to wallpaper both the ceiling and the wall. Wallpaper it, make it fun, make it intentional, and kind of just make it feel like a cozy space. I think when it comes to bedroom matching, you want to have a buddy, right? So I always talk about having a buddy when it comes to matching things. So if you have lime green in your room, you don't wanna have just one thing that has lime green. You wanna have your bedspread that's lime green with a piece of art that has some lime green and maybe some speckled lime green in a pillow or in a rug. So that way it kind of all talks to each other and kind of is well represented. You don't wanna have lime green walls, lime green bedspread, lime green rug, everything matching. That would be a mistake. You can't go wrong with white. White or cream is timeless. That will never go out of style. If you're investing your money in, in uh, some really nice drapery, go with something more basic and kind of clean and timeless. Solid color bedding is easy to decorate with. So are prints. I love using printed bedding. I think it's fun, I think it's artistic. So when it comes to decorating, I think obviously the bed is one of the biggest things in the bedroom and you wanna add a pattern to that. That's a great idea. Just make sure you keep other things a little bit more neutral and balanced so you don't have too much going on. Okay, so a multifunctional bedroom. I'm assuming maybe you mean like an office and a guest bedroom or sometimes people like to put their gyms in their guest bedroom or in their bedroom. I will say this, I'm not a huge fan. Is that your phone? Oh, that's a timer? Oh no, I thought that was like your alarm. Guys, there's so many more questions. Oh no, should I have done more time? I mean, we still, really? Okay, well that was really fun. Maybe we'll do like a bedroom part two. If you want a bedroom part two, maybe like leave a comment below. I'll keep the questions on standby. Just a disclaimer for those of you that enter questions. If you've sent a question in that's very specific to your room, um, I encourage you to join the design sessions because that is the space that we answer specific questions about your specific space. This platform or this series right here is just generic design questions I'm gonna quickly answer for you. There is a platform, like I said, where I can get into the nitty gritty. So I encourage you to go sign up over there. That way you can send me your photos and we can get more specific help and have a lot more fun in that regard. Okay guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope that that was fun. I feel like that was kind of exhilarating to have a timer going. There were some I was not able to get to. That's just the nature of the game. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and follow on Instagram, that way you know when the next subject is released and you can ask me your design question. Okay, I'll see you next time, bye.